Greetings friend, I'll show you how to avoid getting stuck when cross-hatching a Sudoku puzzle without marks. Thank you Prasanna Sasadri for letting me feature your puzzles on this channel. Click below if you want to give this puzzle a go. And with that, it's solving time. If you want to get some quick solves, you need to look at the ones first. You'll see how you have a one in row seven. And in column three, there's only one place to put a one right here in block seven. And that's called cross hatching because you look across the row and column, and there's only one place to put a candidate, you mark it, and you can move on to the next cell. With these two ones, I can go up here, put a one in block three. And with these two ones and this one here in block two. And then with these two ones, you can put a one in block nine. And then with these two ones and these two ones, one place left for a one in block six is right there. And so we finished all of the ones using cross hatching. If you look at the twos, there's only one place there where you can put a two. And because of the two covers all of these cells in column one, you can put a two right there. But if we go to the threes, we'll get a lot more cross hatching. Okay, with these two threes and this three, you can put a three right here in block eight. And with these two threes, a three in block two. And with these two threes and this three, you just kind of want to look where the threes are, where that digit is, and then look in the adjoining blocks to see if you can solve it. We can put a three right there. And then with these two threes and these two threes, you can solve for three right there. And we finish all of the threes. So remember, when you close a number out, you no longer have to deal with it. You know, now we have no more ones and no more threes. So you're solving a Sudoku with seven possible candidates now instead of nine. And some people appreciate tips like this so much that they buy me copies like Joanne and RJ Best. Thank you. I really appreciate it. It helps me travel to events like SudokuCon 2025, where you can meet me and Persona Society in person, where we'll be guest speakers. Okay, if you look at some of these other digits, like the fours, cannot do any cross hatching right now. Neither with the fives or the sixes or even the sevens. But if you go to the eights, you will see that we can do some cross hatching here. And normally I, I try to go chronological, but you can just go where there's the most uh, filled in digits and start there. That's also not a good place to start. There's only one place for an eight in block seven. These two eights, you can put an eight in block four. And then with these two eights and this eight, you can put an eight here in block six. But then you'll notice that we have four places remaining for an eight, two in block two and two in block five. And you want to remember this. We can't finish out the eights, but we are one step away. You just need to solve one of these cells and you'll be able to solve the last two eights. So I call that a one step restriction. You want to keep that in your working memory so you can get a quick solve or two later on. After the eights, uh, what you may want to notice is what I call a heavy house. So this is another tip. If you kind of go through and you look like with the nines and go, oh, I can't make any solves with these nines. Look for a heavy house. A house is a Sudoku row column block. In this case, it has five or more filled out digits. And you might see that because there's no four and eight here in block five with this four and eight, actually go in these two cells, which would leave you then with a five a six and a nine right here. So five, six, nine right there. That means the only thing left to go in this cell is a two. So we kind of switched and we actually found a naked single two. If you want to keep the momentum up, you got to learn tricks like this, like find these naked singles to keep your solving going. And so like we can do the same thing here in column two. You know, where can a four go? Well, it can't go here because of this four and it can't go here because of this four. So you can actually solve this cell now for a four. And then you can continue cross that. You go right back to it. With these two fours, you can solve for a four right there. And you might think we're done with the fours, but we are not. There's something special going on here. You remember that we have four and eight right there? Well, these fours act as a pointing pair. What it means is since the fours are restricted in block five to row five, a four cannot be anywhere else outside the block. You cannot put a four here, because then you have no place to put a four. So pointing pairs will extend your ability to cross hatch. Because with this four, now you actually have another pointing pair of fours right here. So the fours are in these spots in block six, these spots in block five, 
this spot covers column one. So the only place we can put a four is right there. So you get an extra solve by knowing where those pointing pairs are. And then after doing that, uh, I'm gonna reveal my next amazing tip. But I want you to know that you can solve this puzzle even faster than you think. I offer monthly reward puzzle packs and the real value is you get to learn and practice new techniques in a fun and exciting way. Join the Smarty Party like my new members, Jody and RJ Best, and I'll send you my next pack along with a new one each month. Give me the correct solution, I'll give you a video shout out on a future video just like Paula Phoebe, Aaron Wells, and Carol Emmerich who all solved my October rewards pack. Click the pin comment today because you want to solve things faster, right? And now we have some more one-step restrictions in this puzzle than you think. Notice another heavy house down here in row nine. There's seven digits filled out. A one, two, three, five, six, eight, and nine. All we have left is a four and a seven. So you just have to find one of those to cover the cell as a hidden single and you can solve the other. So this seven will tell you that the seven has to go right there, and then this is gonna be your four. And you remember that one step restriction with the four on these two cells? You can solve that right away, because you'll remember that. And now, after doing this, you know you can solve the eight right here. Remember we had those eight one step restrictions? Since the four is solved, boom, boom, knock those out, and all the eights are done. Okay, let's move on with the fives now, because you have this five covering all of these cells, you can solve for five right there. And with this five, cross hatch a five right here into block five. And now we only have two cells to worry about here in row four, a six and a nine. Well, the six is right there. So, you know, that's a nine and that's got to be the six. And now you want to stay with the sixes here, right? Because you have these two sixes. The only place to put a six in block six is right there. And now you can solve the six and the nine there and finish up block five and then come right here it's very easy to take that digit you just solved see if it goes in the next block it does it goes right here so that's a nine and that's a seven now you want to do the same thing stay with the seven i call this following the wave all right these two seven you got seven right there and then with this seven just looking in an adjacent block i can solve for seven right there it allows us to solve for seven up here and then the seven right here in block seven you might have some trouble looking going where next, but you want to do is kind of see if there's something right here. Since we have eight that is now filled out, you know it's certainly you can solve this for a six and then follow up the block and go, that's got to be a six and that's got to be a two. I don't see a five across row two, so we can put a five right there. And so we're just doing some really quick cross hatching. Every now and then we got to put in a naked single and we're making it through this puzzle. And you might be wondering where should you go next? Because this is what takes the hardest part, switching between digits and finding new solve paths. Before I show you that, I want to first thank you for your support. I donate a portion of my proceeds to Agape International Missions. Last month, we raised $36 to stop human trafficking, bringing our yearly total to $181. You can follow my volunteer efforts with AIM on my Smart Hobbies Instagram page. If you look down at these fives, you have two places to put a five right here, so we can't solve with the five. However, if you notice with this six covering these two cells, you can solve this for a six now, and then bring it right back up and solve those digits for a six, and finish up row one with a two. And now we can finish up row three, or actually block two here with a nine. All right, and now with these two nines, you can solve for the nine right there and just quickly fill in that five right there. So that's how you're gonna get those quick solves in. And so you wanna go here for some great restriction. There's only two cells remaining. You just need a four and a five right there. Can't really do that yet, but if you see this four comes down, restricts to this cell in block six. Now you can solve the four right there and we can solve the five right there and just continue to follow the five. These two fives allows you to put a five right here. Only one digit remains, so naturally you go right here and go, that's gotta be a two. That's gotta be a two. That's gotta be a two. And then we can solve our last digit for a seven. Now challenge yourself to solve this next puzzle without marks. Thank you so much for watching.